welcome back to my part two review of the fantastic MV Augusta Dragster. Um, I've done a part one to this video where I was sort of running it in. The bike only had eight miles on it when I got it, so I couldn't really give it any razzing. This is the part two. It's now got about 500 miles on this machine. I have been really enjoying this bike. So this is part two. In this episode, we can give it a little bit of beanage because this bike is all about the top end. This is 140 horsepower naked, delivering its maximum power at 12,300 revs. So it's all about the revs, the noise, the intoxicating sound <laughs> this thing's incredible but first of all we've got to say a massive thank you to wheels motorcycles links at the bottom wheels are now mv dealers so they've added mvs to their list their extensive list of uh, manufacturers they they sell so uh, check out the links below you may be wanting to do that by the time you finish watching this review because this bike is a little bit special but without further ado mavis Roll the intro. In the first ride I said I can't wait to get a few more miles on this, start giving it some beanage because it's going to sound fantastic. I was absolutely right, this thing sounds amazing. This is obviously Euro 5, so it's got you know a load of cats in the exhaust, and the actual exhaust note is quite muted, but the induction roar from this thing, oh, it is intoxicating. Let me give you another listen in second gear. So if you haven't seen my first ride with you, I'll put a link up there, go and have a look because I'm not going to cover too much the things I've already covered in that first ride. This, this, this review is about really everything I've learnt in the, in the week of having this in my garage. Those 500 miles I've covered, what have I learnt about this bike? And the, the first thing which has really surprised me is I could see myself owning one of these and that's something I never thought I would say about an MV when this bike was completely off my radar because I'm actually tempted with buying myself a Super Naked. I'm actually thinking of selling the H2 and getting myself a Super Naked and I've always been saying for the last couple of years that middleweight bikes make a hell of a lot of sense on the road and this bike is, I think it's the ultimate middleweight, I really do bit of gravel honestly this thing is almost super naked category it's almost I think it blows all of the other middleweights out of the water 140 horsepower I think it's 87 Newton meters of torque this thing is rapid if you compare it to the likes of the street triple etc oh, it feels so much faster and it's quite long geared, it's quite high geared as well. So, you know, I'm gonna talk about Super Nakeds for me, it was about fun, you know, wheelies, all of that. And this has all of that. It's incredible. And, you, and, the, and the wheelie control is completely independent to the traction control. So the wheelie control, you can just have it off, it remembers it off, it doesn't remind you to turn it off, just run it with it off and then you've got traction control as well so uh, yeah i'm really taken with this bike and uh, as i say i'm so thankful for wheels for saying try this because it never would have been on my radar but anyway i'm getting a bit carried away i'm getting a little bit carried away so let's go through some of the other things about this bike so what are the standout features of this machine i mean I, i've been blubbering about this you know i'm gushing about this it's not a perfect motorcycle you know it's not perfect so let's talk a little bit about what isn't perfect about it the throttle response is a little bit aggressive um, I, I wouldn't say snatchy but it's aggressive i mean i've got this in the sport mode which is the least aggressive of the maps you've got a custom map so you can set this exactly how you want it overall but this is in the uh this is in the 
least aggressive throttle mode. There's only two, there's aggressive and not so aggressive. I don't think they're actually called that. But it's still, you know, it, it's, it's aggressive, it's there, you know. It, this bike, first of all, it's not going to be your daily, this isn't going to be your commuter bike. So if, you, if you've got ideas now, I've, I've, I've got things whirring in your brain about getting an MV as a commuter. It's not a commuter bike. This is absolutely a Sunday morning thrash machine. You know, this whole thing is very, very racy. Absolutely racy. Emphasis on the R. <laughs> this is r a racy bike. So it's, you know, you're in a quite an aggressive riding position. You know, the bars are wide, you're forward, you've got a little bit of weight on your wrist. It's also a little bit buzzy. The seat is actually quite hard. So more than a couple of hours in the seat and you start to get a little bit of posterior pain. But I can excuse all that, you know. Also, the suspension is, is hard as well. <laughs> it's fun like that. It's fun like that, which I love. But the suspension is also aggressive. It's, it's Marzocchi forks and a Saxe rear shock. You know, it's not top of the line suspension. It's been set firm. I have twiddled with the twiddlies, as I said I would. I've round a little bit of preload out the front and it is much better. I've also played with the compression and rebound dampening. It is much better, but it's, it's, it's now just aggressive, you know. So when you do go over potholes and that, you're gonna feel it, it's a bit jarring, you know, it's, it's not vet, it's not really plush, expensive feeling suspension, you know, like an Olin setup might be. So uh, yeah, suspension isn't perfect. Also, the brakes are not top of the line brakes, and they really feel it. I mean, if you're jumping off a bike with stylemas, then you're going to think the brakes aren't working on this. But once you, if you only ride this all the time, you get used to it, you know. But you do have to pull the lever quite hard. So again, the brakes aren't brilliant. Uh, what, what else is no good? I'm trying to think what else is no good. Also, we just cover all the bad things. Also, what else is no good is when you indicate, you can barely see the little indicator light. So quite often you leave the indicators on because you just really can't see it. Look. And it's not even sunny today. You get a bit of sun on that dashboard, forget it. So that is the bad things. <laughs> That is all the bad things. Throttle response is a bit snatchy. The whole ride's very firm and racy, which is also a good thing. <laughs> it's not just a bad thing. And uh, the brakes aren't brilliant, and you can't see the indicator very well. I mean, that is, who would have thought that was your ex exhaustive list of things which are wrong with an MV? And I've ridden the Brutale version of this a couple of years ago. It was hideous around town. You know, I, I, I could never have owned it. It was fantastic when it was singing at sort of 8,000 revs and above, anything below that, hideous. They've sorted it. They have sorted it. It's, it's you know, in town I say it's a little bit snap, but it's fine. It is absolutely fine. And I could really live with this now. Oh. First gear, it likes to do a bit of that on the power. The bike is flighty, it's exciting, you know, it's got a steering damper up front, but the front will come up, it will jump around, it will shimmy, you know, not in a, not in a flexing way, but just in a, you know, <laughs> it's just really exhilarating to ride. And, and I think this is what this bike is all about. It's just about the thrill and the exhilaration of riding a fast motorcycle. And MV have got that covered down to a T. Oh. And the sound on top of it and the quick shift and blipper, oh. <laughs> it all adds up to an amazing package. Oh. <laughs> yeah, those front brakes, right. <laughs> Not brilliant. Rear brakes, very good though. So I tend to find myself. I tend to find myself using the rear quite a lot, going into the corners and stuff, you know, and st staying off the front a little bit more. I think that's probably due to the limitations of the front end on this. I mean, it's got an amazing amount of grip. 
so if I was riding something like the, uh, the Speed Triple RS, which has an incredible front end, an incredible suspension, incredible brakes, I wouldn't really be using the rear brake. I'd be doing all my braking on the front end. With this, the front end isn't as nice as the Speed. So I tend to cover a little bit on the rear to save upset, ups, upsetting the front so much. But once you're dialed into this, once you you know how to ride it, it is incredibly fast. Incredibly fast. And the more aggressive you are with it, the more it rewards. If you're tentative, I thought it'd be like this, I'll mention this in the first ride. But if you're tentative with it, like when I was trying to bed the tyres in a little bit, it doesn't feel nice. You've got to take it by the scruff of the neck, chuck it in, and it will reward you for that. And uh, it is, <laughs> as you can see, I'm really rather taken with this. And not only is it fantastic, exciting, incredible to ride, it's an eight, you know, it's a middleweight. You're using the gears, you're thrashing it, you're listening to that sound without jail speed. Yeah, it's 140 horsepower, it is fast and three digits clicks by very very quickly you know i'm not saying you can't go to jail on this part you absolutely can but you, you it's more engaging because you're working the, the engine still you know whereas perhaps on a a liter bike naked or it's not quite as much fun because you're not working it as much and that's all part of what makes a great road bike so yeah i'm, I'm very tempted with this Get it by the scruff of the neck, by its horns, and say, Oi, MV, get in the corner. And going on the power, the front will go light. You get any little bumps in the road, it will start bouncing. It's what motorcycling excitement is all about. It is, they call the, you know, MV, they say they make a motorcycle art. They do. Not only does this thing ride incredible, sound incredible, it also looks incredible. It's a beautiful machine, beautifully finished. I won't do a walk around in this video because I did that in the part one. But the full walk around is in part one. So look at part one if you want to see a few close-up details with a decent camera. Just listen to it though. Have you ever heard such a thing? MV, <laughs> oh, they've cracked it. MV have been producing like the dragster, the, 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 the brutality for a few years now. They finally Cracked it. They finally <laughs> got it sorted. What a machine. Okay, let's slow it down a little bit before I end up in jail or hospital or the morgue. <laughs> so Let's go for a few other little things about this. Let's, let's slow it down. The beauty of the new Dragster is it will run nice and slow. It will do that without being a, mo a hideous monster. So you, you've got some low speed manners. Yeah, it, yeah, the quick shift and flip is also nice at low speed, you know. If it wasn't for the slight bit of snatch, it would be a perfect town bike. An MV, a perfect town bike. Uh, can I go that far? I, I, I don't know I can go that far. Fuel consumption, it's got a 16 and a half litre tank. I've been getting about 100, between 100 and 120 miles on a tank. So, you know, not bad. You know, it's, it's an 800, it's 799cc, so it doesn't absolutely drink like, uh, you know, it's bigger super naked brothers. So fuel consumption ain't bad. It's got no fuel gauge so you've got to reset the trip I and mean, I've done 91 miles since I fueled it and I've been running it yeah, 
little bit harder now and the fuel light hasn't come on so i suspect the fuel light's going to come on as part of this ride so we'll see when it clicks on the thing which would stop me buying one or has even stopped me contemplating buying an mv in the past is the reliability and i mentioned it briefly in, in the first ride but mv are now under new ownership they're owned by a russian firm now i believe for the last couple of three years ago were they taken over by the russian firm probably russian mafia <laughs> but so, so they've got a new they're under new ownership and what they've done to try and reassure people on reliability they now offer a three-year warranty on all mvs so you've got three-year warranty which is more than you get with ducati it's more than you get with aprilia you know it's a three-year warranty so that's fantastic the only sort of uh, downside to the whole servicing warranty obviously to keep your warranty you've got to have the bike serviced by an official dealer because this engine is 140 horsepower it's quite highly tuned it needs an oil change every 6,000 kilometers which is around about 3,800 miles so it's a service every 3,800 miles so you know what this bike is used for like a weekend toy this couldn't really be your only bike i don't think so this would always be a second bike so then then 3700 miles probably becomes a sort of annual mileage really you know that'll be for me it'll be my annual mileage about 3700 miles so then it still becomes you know one service a year which is fine delicious blipper sounds really really racy when you use a quick shifter blipper it really adds something to your ride that little pop it a little oh, it sounds so good when you're on the quick shifter blipper <laughs> glorious is it not absolutely glorious what more can i add to what i've already said this bike is now up there on my list even morning chaps of my top five it's definitely in my top five naked bikes ever now it could even be above the top five it could be in my top three naked bikes ever what i really like about it is it is a middleweight that's i think that's think why when I mean, i've ridden the uh, the thousand cc version the thousand cc brutali rr you know the 27k mv i'll put a link to the video at the top there that was a straight four and you know it was very flat at the bottom straight fours are very flat at the bottom and then they all kick off at the top and that doesn't make a good road bike certainly doesn't make a good naked road bike so that one no it was 27 grand so that one was never on my list of top top motorbikes this triple this 800 cc triple what i love about it not only is it incredible at the top end it's also got decent torque as well and if we do fourth gear 35 miles an hour 60 miles an hour it's completely usable in the bottom to mid range you don't have to thrash it to, to make progress and i think that is why this bike is also so good because of that triple engine and the way it makes its power so if you were looking for a naked bike as perhaps your second bike and you could, uh, could you have this as your only bike it couldn't be your only form of transport it could be your only bike it couldn't be your only form of transport let's put it that way so if you're looking for a naked as your second form of transport then get this on your radar straight away don't you know because i didn't even consider even trying an mv I wasn't even on my radar to try as I was looking to buy a naked. So if you are looking to buy a naked, get yourself down to wheels, get a test ride on this, and let me know what you think in the comments, because I think you will be surprised at this machine. You've tried the rest. Now try something else. <laughs> I'd say it's the best, but try one. It is very very good and, and i'm now like mm, god mm, 
Should I get one of these? Should I forget a Street Fighter? Should I forget a Super Juice? Should I forget a, a Speed Triple RS? Should I get an MV? This is power level one, which is full power. <laughs> I could do that all day. What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! <laughs> Listen to me. Oh, <laughs>